Okay, we're here at uh, Value-Based Healthcare Conference 2020 OBHC. Um, I'm here with Ingrid, um, and uh, you just gave a really fascinating talk, um, kind of focusing on payer relations and some of the aspects of ASCs. Um, but you have a ton of expertise in it, almost everything. Um, um, currently uh, at Mednax, but um, you also work for a, another company that has some specific interest. Uh, I think for this talk, just to, it'd be great to hear what you're doing right now. Well, it's not another company, it's one of our portfolio companies. Got it's it. Surgical okay, Directions, and I just wanted to highlight the great work they're doing in the yeah. perioperative space. Uh, they uh, work with a lot of hospital partners to improve perioperative efficiency, and in this value-based environment, I believe that uh, all organizations that aim to lower costs, improve outcomes, and have a sustainable model uh, should take a look at what the great work Surgical Directions is doing. Yeah, that's fantastic, Surgical Directions. Um, Tell us a little bit more about kind of where you see the vision for value-based care going. You have a unique perspective. You've been across the clinical um, care uh, portfolio. You've been in business. You've been in strategy. Um, yeah, I think you know you have a, a direction that I think we could all benefit from hearing a little bit about what your vision is. Yeah, I think my vision actually uh, aligns with what some of our panelists also mentioned, and I was happy to hear that. That just having a race um, towards cutting costs is not going to be the sustainable model. And we have to be creative in terms of designing alternative payment models. We have to be creative in, in having a larger population health approach as opposed to just have individual metrics in silos that fit a contract uh, need. And we have to break the silos of just thinking that uh, annual contractual agreements quickly signed will, will um, help us uh, develop a long-term value-based ecosystem. So I, I strongly recommend everybody to have cost containment should be an expectation. That should be strategy number one. And then try to differentiate yourself in the market by improving quality, improving outcomes, having a global population health approach, and trying to break these silos. One of our panelists also mentioned that uh, disruption is coming our way from employers and new entrants into the system. And if we don't start to think like that, unfortunately, a lot of organizations that uh, are not ready will, will have a hard time. That's right, that's right. We talk a little bit sometimes about the straddle, kind of transitioning from fee-for-service to value-based mm -hmm. care. People are aligning on both sides, trying to figure out how to make that transition. You know, earlier Scott Levin mentioned in mm -hmm. his uh, panel session mm -hmm. the advantage of technology and what that brings to value-based care. Mm -hmm. You have a tremendous understanding of technology from, you know, blockchain to genomics to, you know, innovation. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on technology and the influence it can have on value-based care. <clears throat> I actually believe that the, the strategic considerations that healthcare organizations are facing right now are deeply, deeply, deeply tied to digital acumen. And I actually believe that organizations that do not understand how digital uh, technology is deeply infused in every single aspect of whatever they're going to decide, <laughs> they're going to have a, a hard time and they're going to fail. So specifically, cybersecurity, digital integration of claims, uh, we, I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, several uh, payers have uh, formed a consortium to put all their claims on blockchain. Okay. Most people don't even Understood. know about blockchain okay. yet in healthcare, but the payers for two years have been working diligently on putting all their claims on blockchain. And then there are several other consortiums who work on uh, provider credentialing to be put on a blockchain as well. Not to mention, I don't know if you saw the news, FDA just a few days ago announced that they're going to use uh, blockchain to track all the pharmaceutical industry and wow. I think that's a big step so that's once you have FDA payers provider credentialing it's, you start to see kind of like a puzzle coming together that's and that's just one but I think also AI has been the new kid on the block this year if you open your LinkedIn news feed you're gonna see AI almost every third article something with it, right. either the risks of AI or the opportunities of AI uh, so I do believe for healthcare and specifically for value-based care there are a few of these novel technologies that are going to probably um, 
make a big disruptive move this year or if not next year. Quantum computing is another one that can have a big impact in value-based care. So if you ask me to pick blockchain, yeah. definitely one. AI, so applying AI for value-based care. That can really break the whole market. Wow. And then the third one, quantum and edge computing. And people don't know yet what it really means, but the speed, the technology that it would allow us to, to process all the things that now take us 18 months to reconcile. One of the panelists mentioned it, that there's complete misalignment between how the contracts are being designed and how the payments are supposed to happen. That's right. All those elements I mentioned from a digital technology perspective can solve all that and they can be instant. The same way like we have in banking. When you want your bank account to have the money, if I transfer your money right now, do you want to wait 18 months? No. no. Don't you want to <laughs> see it right now in your mobile app? Yeah, exactly. So same expectations in healthcare in terms of value-based care. If we would want to have complete transparency, instant processing of claims so that a payer, provider, patient, or hospital partner would instantly see what happened with the dollars in this system. That's, right. That's where we should aim to be. Fascinating. That's it. Fascinating. That's simple as So that. if you take that and build off it a little bit and say, you know, if I'm a big group of uh, physicians or a big group of surgeons and I say to myself, oh my gosh, I have to either ha figure out AI uh, blockchain or quantum <coughs> computing, I'm going to have a stroke. What do you think, yeah. there, from, a, from a perspective of a clinician or a surgical group or a, or a medical group, what are some maybe smaller bite-sized pieces or steps along the way in that journey that would be beneficial? You're absolutely right. Most people have the, the false impression that having a digital uh, strategy means like going to buy an iPhone or a Mac and plugging it in. That doesn't work like That's that. Right. You need to understand what your pain points are and where the ROI is for you as an organization or a provider group, no matter if you are a payer, hospital or provider group. You need to know where do I need to deploy the right technology so that it addresses my pain point and it fits into my other strategic goals, right? You can't just deploy AI to deploy AI. Sure, you need yeah. to have that specific AI tool help you in your strategy that right. you set out to achieve. And what do you want to differentiate yourself with? We talked about that also on the panel. Differentiating yourself in this market, in this value-based environment is crucial yep. because everybody's gonna master cutting costs right. sooner or later because right. you either die or you master cutting costs. That's right. If you don't want to cut costs, you need to come up with some very, very beautiful, innovative, transformative things to offer so that people want to pay a premium. And I think that's where these unique digital technologies can come in. But you should not say, oh, I need a little bit of quantum, I need a little bit of AI, I need a little bit of blockchain. No. As a matter of fact, if you can provide excellent value without any of these, awesome, because right. it's cheaper. But you should know that others are deploying them and, and you should be aware of them. So I always call for balance and a very mindful approach yeah, as opposed to just going shopping for digital tools. That's right. You don't want to just check boxes <coughs> to say you've done something. I think yeah. you know one of the things that you touched on which really resonated with me was understanding as a group or um, an organization where your p pain points are. Mm -hmm. So kind of a um, self-reflective approach initially and then a cohesive strategy. Um, you know, differentiation specifically, one of the things I think a lot about is um, outcomes. Mm -hmm. It's vaguely described as a lot of things, but one thing specifically, um, as a surgeon, I think about patient-reported outcomes, mm -hmm. um, collecting those, leveraging those. H how do you see that fitting in um, specifically in kind of a digital or an analytic strategy moving forward? <clears throat> well, I think that's when I mentioned on the panel that we have some missed opportunities. It's exactly what you just referenced. I think for... <clears throat> The, long, the longest time, when you look at all the 3,500 metrics we have in healthcare, how many patient reported outcomes do you see? Right. Maybe 20. Maybe. And, and when you look at the standardization of those, they are terrible. Right. And they're still collected on paper or if you're lucky on an iPad. Right. So I think, yes, there are some of the novel technologies like natural language processing, some of the technologies like Alexa, some of the technologies that we have now um, in terms of AI, could real, or chatbots, could really help with, yeah. with some of these patient reported outcomes and, and really change the paradigm. But I think it's been completely missed. Everybody complains about press gainy, as you know. <laughs> but who has come up with something better That's yet? Right. Show so me 
two other options, and then we can have a talk. Right. I don't like them either. Yeah. But they are what they are, and until now, no one has come up That's with something right. better. So I think, yes, deploying some of these novel tools, and there are some hospital systems that have made a leap, yeah. uh, and they're showing very promising results. So I think that's going to be the future. Fantastic. Well, um, we could talk all day. Um, I'm going to let you get back to the, um, the conference you. and the panel. And thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with oh, us. No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay.